in 1989, The Little Mermaid splashed onto our screens and ushered in a new golden era for Disney animation. $235 million at the box office and 92% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, the Hans Christian Andersen tale was hailed for its charming hand-drawn characters, catchy music and colourful underwater world. Dive deep into Atlantica, however, and you will discover that this is far from a magical, subaqueous kingdom. It is a realm ruled by racism, sexism, capitalism, adultism, fatism, and not to mention anti-veganism. On the surface, The Little Mermaid is just another beautiful Disney motion picture with an eclectic array of colourful cartoon characters. Put in your CRT lenses, and the picture looks very, very different. This is no longer a world awash with the colours of the rainbow. It's not even black and white. It's a white world. A world so white that one wonders if they are looking through a telescope at the surface of the moon. Ariel, white. Prince Eric, white. King Triton, Fill in the blank. The Little Mermaid is so white hot that even the animals look like Walt Disney forgot to colour them in. The bird. The dog. How about this shark? Of course, a great white. Walt Disney. More like white Disney. A scroll through the film reel for colour yields sparse diversity. Aha! Who's this? Oh. Now? No. There! Stop! Nope, keep going, because the people of colour are the people in the back. Why? This is a white wedding for a white prince and princess. Oh, your majesty! Finally, some much needed diversity. But why must the only non-standard English accent come out of the mouth of a crab? There can only be one conclusion. His song... Darling, it's bitter, down where it's winter, take it from me! A message for Ariel, stay under the sea, because it's the only safe space for people like me. The other characters of colour, villains. In a world as white as the Little Mermaid, Ursula is outcast. Cast out, she has to find friends, but there are none like her, so she has no choice but to make some. She turns white mermaids into blackfish. Ursula's only crime in the whole story, she wanted friends. Friends who weren't whiter than a cocaine polar bear. A woman who looks like Ursula has zero chance of finding love or friendship under the sea or on the shore. To woo Prince Eric, hypnosis and a white paintbrush. In case viewers forget this new girl is Ursula, one detail is left untouched. Her hair, not crimson red, but black or brown, to signify that dark colours mean dark characters. In The Little Mermaid, Ursula deserves sympathy and understanding, not a brutal death at the hands of Prince White Privilege. On first impressions, Ariel is your typical Disney princess who yearns for true love. There's nothing wrong with that, until The Little Mermaid is revealed to be a huge dollop of patriarchy. Love at first sight, lust at first sight, Ariel is portrayed as shallower than a summer ditch. She's not attracted to Prince Eric due to his skill with the flute or his friendship with the dog, but his handsomeness. He's very handsome, isn't he? What does the prince first like about Ariel? Beautiful voice. A man is deep. A woman, an empty vessel waiting to be filled by a man. Ariel's infatuation turns to obsession. She immediately wants to give up the sea life for the wife life, makes out with his statue, and. Somebody's got to nail that girl's pins to the floor. Turns Sebastian violent. In a world ruled by white men and white mermen, Ariel's only hope, a sea witch who can cast a magical spell. You will be forever human under one condition. She has three days. You've got to get dear old Princey to fall in love with you. The kiss of true love. If there's no kiss... You turn back into a mermaid. You belong 
to me. No, Ariel! So Ariel's mission is not to disarm a rogue state, thwart the Nazis, or free Pandora. It's to kiss a prince, or lose her soul to a sea witch. Like all 20th century Disney princesses, Ariel is a prisoner to the patriarchy, and her only way out a Faustian deal with the devil. Human Ariel soon learns the world above is no more equal than the world below for a woman. She has no voice, no clothes, and gets wolf whistles from Scuttle, the sexy seabird. Eric's dog sniffs out the beached Ariel within seconds, and Eric looks like a quarterback on prom night, despite never hearing her speak. As Ursula puts it, the men up there don't like a lot of blabber. They think a girl who gossips is a bore. Ariel may be the wittiest raconteur since Orson Welles, but all that matters is what she looks like. As soon as Prince Patriarchy has her home, it's bath time, dress time, it's time to make her up like a doll. She may comb her hair with a fork, smoke like a chimney, and play with her food, but for Eric, it does not matter. He has what he wants. The perfect woman. Beautiful. Docile. And completely mute. In this world, the male gaze is like the Death Star gazing on Alderaan. When Ariel is carted away by evil sea witch Ursula, the Pale Prince and King Trite race to her rescue. She is a damsel in distress, a princess in peril, a mermaid in mere tribute to strong male heroes. She has no agency, no independence. She exists to be saved and married. Before, Ariel was under the sea. Now, under the thumb, the mighty thumb of thundering patriarchy. When Ariel's fins are not flapping in sight of a handsome white male prince, capitalism, the opium of the oppressed, Blind people with glittering bling, and their minds won't ring awake to the social injustice all around them. Autonomy, not automatic for you and me, if you and me are Ariel and other young mermaids. The king micromanages every aspect of her life. He is a bigot. Barbarians by, by one of those humans. Daddy, they're not barbarians. They're dangerous. They're all the same. Spineless, savage, harpooning fish eaters, incapable of any feeling. And a bully. So be it. He orders crabs to keep tabs on his daughter like Hoover, hoovering up communist spies. It is only when Ariel escapes his paternal prison that he realizes the error of his fatherly ways. Even a world as diverse as Atlantica has a preference. Size 8. There is no place for members of the larger-than-life community. Despite being surrounded by 310 million cubic kilometers of water, the only swimming Ursula does is to the refrigerator. One of her poor, unfortunate souls... The miserable, lonely and depressed. Pathetic. The Disney of the Dark Ages shone a light, but not on the body positive, only on those with a body mass index negative 25. While Ariel is losing her voice, her freedom, Sebastian is in danger of losing his life. Like all poor, unfortunate creatures not named man, he's ready to be served up for dinner. To less awake audiences, it is comedy. To modern audiences, a horrifying reminder that no animal, no crab, is safe from Jaws. Not the Jaws, but the Jaws of white carnivorism in the form of Prince Predator and his meat-eating maitre d'. The Little Mermaid is a big black colourless mark in the history of Disney animation. There is only one solution, and that is to rip it up and remake it. Remove the racism, the sexism, and the other isms that blighted pre-21st century productions. 
On March 13th, Disney released a trailer for a brand new Little Mermaid. It has been watched by 12 million people and liked by 260,000. Impressive numbers, but is the trailer impressively laying to rest the ghosts of Disney's past? Let's dive in and find out. First impression, still whiter than a Tipex oil spill. Where is the diversity? Abandoned ship! What's that sound? Is that the sweet song of social justice? Captain Whiteout has been rescued, but by who is that Ariel? Whoa, are my eyes deceiving me? Still too blurry to tell. Oh yes, 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 that's what I'm talking about. It took Disney 100 years to finally figure out that what the world needed was a modern mermaid. You broke the rules. You went to the above world. A man was drowning. I had to save him. This obsession with humans has to stop. King Trite, no longer King White, and no longer shouting at his daughter like J.K. Simmons in Whiplash. Answer! I just want to know more about them. She may not look like a child, but Ariel is indeed only 16 years old, not even old enough to buy a beer in most countries, but old enough to be married away forever. I can help you. You can't live in that world unless you become a human yourself. Is that even possible? That's <laughs> what I live for. <laughs> James Cameron, take note, this is how you do underwater CGI, and there's no more reference to poor, unfortunate, plus-size souls. She's human now, and she has the hair to prove it. L'Oreal presents a scientific revolution. Volume filler. Our first hair care system with phylloxin. Something about you seems different. I can't quite figure it out. She Scuttle, the sexy seabird, gone. Voiced now by the same brilliant voice actress from Velma. He got legs, you idiot. Sebastian won't be winning any beauty contests, but at least he's no longer threatening to nail Ariel's fins to the seafloor. The true colour, beauty, and most of all, diversity of Atlantica now extends to the people, and not just the fish. This is the shot. The shot that says racism, sexism, and worlds dominated by white males and white mermen is over. Out with the white, in with what's right. It's a human, you're a mermaid. That doesn't make us enemies. May 2023 may not come soon enough. It is a May that will change the way the world thinks and talks about Little Mermaid. Ariel, you have a voice, and you are now part of our world. Sebastian, you're no longer seafood, you're sea life, and we respect your right to live. Ursula, you may still need more laps of the swimming pool, but surely a tragic death is no longer your fate. 
King Triton, you're now free from the shackles of paternal rage and fury. Prince Privilege, you may still be the prince, but you're no longer the boss. Queen Ariel is ready to ascend to the throne. Thank you, Disney, for updating a Disney classic for modern audiences. The Little Mermaid is now safe for our children and all future generations of children to watch once again.